listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. I'm in uh, Las Vegas tonight working uh, on the Cranky Anchors. Dr. Drew back in Los Angeles working on nothing. And you Phone sound, number one 800 LOV. What's that, buddy? You sound like crap. <clears throat> yeah. Yay, buddy. <laughs> Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. In the uh, studio tonight, back in Los Angeles, joins us. Uh, she's a dear, 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 dear friend of mine, Rachel Dratch from Saturday Night Live. Rachel? Yes. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm sorry I missed you. And I know. I'm sad that I don't get to She's very sad. Lay and she, eyes upon she you. She confirmed your dear, 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 dear friend. Uh, qualification she said I, I don't know my she, Adam's my brother's friend he wrote me into this I don't understand I just got here a second ago dear dear friend she's a dear <laughs> yes. dear friend well uh, <laughs> Rachel's brother uh, Dan has worked on the man show for a number of years now and is an excellent writer as right. well as a dear dear <laughs> dear, dear friend dear friend and um, we started sucking up to Dan uh, a few yeah. months ago, trying to get him uh, <laughs> to get his sister Rachel on the show. <laughs> Evidently, he doesn't have a lot of pull with you, but uh, we got him some Coldplay tickets. Oh, and uh, okay. that's soft. Ah, there we go. That's softened Coldplay. Dan. Now it's coming clear. Just enough for him to uh, get you on the show. And Yay. let me let me kiss Rachel's ass for just a moment. And, and Rachel, no, please, I, don't I don't have, she's, she's I don't have your. Uh, I don't have your bio in front of me, and uh, I don't know if you're plugging the movie. It's very extensive. I assume it is, but... Two Rachel, movies, Adam. Two movies. Well, two movies coming out. Well, All right, well, down Drew, with love. You can, you can plug those, but yeah. hold on a second. Right. Now, Rachel okay. has been on SNL for four three, years. Three years. About I was going to gonna say... I was going to say three, and then I thought, no, it'd be more insulting if I went under, <laughs> so I decided to go over. But yeah. she she started off as, you wouldn't even known she was on the show for the first season. Oh, no. I, I know, but it's true. I didn't realize it, you thought that. No, I didn't think that. Okay. I knew you because your right. brother's a dear, 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 dear friend of mine. Dear, dear friend. Yeah. Yeah. But you were not one of the which I was one a of the featured main, player. You were a featured means player. means you're like in the minors. Right. And then they and make sure they want to keep you. Yeah, yeah. And, and you made it through the toughest times, and that now you're emerging as a star on the show. Well, you know. Yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty damn good. I'm still sometimes in the minors, but, you know, it's kind of a roller coaster. Sometimes you're on all over the show, and sometimes you're in one, you have one line. Well, that that's true, but as soon as you establish yourself as one of the main players, then you can take a week off. You know, if you have sure. a game, if, <laughs> if Barry Bonds can go right. all for four. You're resting it, up your arm. They're not going to cut him from the team. Exactly. Right, and yeah. that's what I want to say about my dear, dear friend, <laughs> okay. Rachel Dredd. <laughs> okay. Now, plug those movies, Drew. Oh, well, oh, go ahead. Drew? Okay. Rachel can. Go ahead. Okay, I have very small parts in these movies, but that's it's like my right. first little movie thing, so... No, one of them doesn't come out till April, and it's called Down With Love with Renee Zellweger, and I have five lines. But it's a really good movie, so that's all. Rachel, when Adam has two lines in a film, he talks about it for okay. about a month. So okay, okay. No, it's a good movie, though. It's going to be really good. So that's and the other one. What? The yes. other one? Has a little ethnic um, flair. Oh, that one. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if this one... When this will come up? It's called the Hebrew Hammer. It's a it's a um, Jewish James Bond movie. <laughs> Adam Goldberg. <laughs> that was yeah. uh, that was Drew's name in high school. <laughs> really? That one that got on the on the, foot, on the football oh, team. Oh yes. <laughs> Actually, it was the Hebrew Hammer. But, okay. You know, all right. And I have probably three lines in that one. So you know, keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, well, I, I'll watch anything with okay. the word Hebrew in okay. it. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'll eat anything with the word really? Hebrew in it. All right. That's always always been my policy. <laughs> okay, mm. good. All right, in Saturday Night Live, when do you go back to work on that? Uh, the first show back is October 5th. So we, and, we start and how up many, a week from Monday. How many episodes do you guys do? 20. Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm never sure how that works. I yeah. just know I, there's the new ones and then the reruns. Right. So. I don't know how that works either. I just look at the schedule. But, yeah, we have 20 a year. Hmm. Some, somewhere they, from September to May, yeah. Hmm. Do hmm. they always do 20? Have they done 20 for the last 20 years? Um, for the last three they have. I don't know about before that. It seems about right, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe they did a 25 or <laughs> Maybe. 30, but we're not know. interested in the past. Right. Let's focus on the present. 
All right. And okay. speaking of the present, Drew, you got some calls there? You well, I do. But uh, speaking of the present, I just wanted to mention one other thing. I hadn't been on California terra firma for about 20 minutes before people were telling me how severely it would be abused pure, poor Bruce. Oh, untrue. I mean, it just sounded like uh, the the Dale Hoyer Was Bruce last night? And Sunday yes. night. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Untrue. It's true more, I was a little sleep deprived. No, no, Bruce. Okay, Bruce is not the Mormon. <laughs> sorry, I, I listened last night in anticipation. He, he's okay. just as bad as a Mormon okay. as Bruce. I think he's like born again or okay. something. I don't know what Bruce is, but Bruce is a dear, dear friend, Drew. And how okay. dare you make these allegations All about right. well, what we have? I'll call old Bruce. Here's Michelle of 22. Michelle. Hello. Hi there. Um, yeah, I have a question. My fiance, we're getting married, or we're supposed to be getting married December 14th of this year. And I've already caught him early in the relationship talking to somebody else. Talking to somebody um, else? What does that mean? He was trying to get into a relationship with him, or with this girl. Do you know that just because he was having a verbal exchange with her? No. Um, I have the proof behind it from his friends, um, his cell phone bills, from talking to her. Um, talking to her friends. All right, so he was. So, I did a lot of investigation. Investigation. Ugh. I don't really open my mouth without having the. And proof how long behind. ago was this, Michelle? Um, about two months ago. How long have you been in this relationship? Um. Well, we've been friends. Like. How long have you been in the relationship? Yeah. How long have you been in the relationship? Um, for about four months. All right, and you're thinking about getting married? Yeah. Well, are you high? No, no, no. We've been friends, best friends, for four years. And, like, I've always run away from him because he's been so great to me. I just, I've always felt like, oh, I don't deserve this. And this time he's really screwing everything up. Well, wait a second. What do you mean he was talking to a girl trying to get into a relationship? He was trying to date her. That's what she said. No, actually, he admitted it. After I, I, I listened to her voicemails, um... He had left All right. he, I, I can't figure this out, Adam, I don't know about you, but the only thing I can tell for sure, <laughs> she should not be getting married. No. That's the only thing I know for sure. Well, also, I, 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 this is kind of graphic, but um, yeast infections, I don't know if you know how they work, but I have not had one since I was 11 years old, and I have one now, and it, I swear to God it's from him because... I haven't done, I haven't changed my eating habits. All right, Michelle, a couple things. I'm very clean First of all, everything. wait a minute. It'd be very difficult for you to tell the difference between a yeast infection and a sexually transmitted disease. So if you oh, think... It, no, it is. I've gone to the doctor. And it's just... Well, yeast infections can occur from anything. They can occur just from stress. So you may be just... I haven't been stressed, though. Well, Nothing do you spread yeast can. infections that way? You really don't. You don't. Well, I heard you can if you, you can you one girl and then you... Go and have yeah, but that. that's really unlikely. That's not the you can spread vaginal infections, but yeast is not a typical one. It can happen, but that it does. It, that's not, that's not hard evidence, okay? Okay. But you shouldn't be getting married. That's pretty clear. You only know the guy for four months well, in a relationship. Well, is, I understand you've been friends for four years, but come on. What? True. Relax yeah. over there. What, well, I don't understand what she wants us to tell her. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? Yeah. He's not cheating. He's cheating. What do you want no, from no. us? It's not really that. It's just. If I should get married to him. Nope. No. No. I... Okay. Next call. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Well, listen. No no 22-year-old should be getting married anyway. Uh, you know, if you guys had had a kid and you'd been together for two and a half years, then maybe that's a different story. But right. if this guy's trying to date, which is much worse than cheating, by the way, right. Right. Uh, this guy's trying to date as close as two months ago, and you have some suspicions surrounding yeast. It yes. just doesn't sound like she wants no. to do it. Ab- it doesn't sound like a good idea. Whether or not it's something screwed up in her head, and he's not actually doing nothing, or if he's actually engaging in behaviors that she should be worrying about. In either case, she shouldn't be getting married. That's right. Rachel, you agree? Um, yes, I agree. See, see how easy that is? This is an easy Rachel, I'm getting the hang are, of this, but, but this much yeah. I know. Are, they, you, are you single? Are you yes, seeing I'm somebody? Yes, I'm single. Mm. I'm, I'm in no position to be giving anyone advice about anything. How but, come? Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't dated anyone in a while. That's all right. Well, how, do, how does thing. it work? Uh, I mean, well, Rachel, that was amazing math. You're single because you haven't dated. <laughs> <in a while. laughs> but, it, but I've been single for a while, so... 
Yeah, well, let I'm, me I'm ask, just here to observe. <laughs> well, how does how does being on Saturday Night Live affect a single woman? Oh, because boy. a single a single guy a single would guy be cashing is in on totally, it. Totally, single guy. It's great, I think, from my observations. Yeah, um, single lady. I don't know the the comedy thing and women. I don't I don't know. I haven't figured it out. I'm is still it, doing is it, research. Is it intimidating? You think the guys? Um, I'm not sure. I I don't know. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to set you up. You are? Yeah. Really? I'm going to work something out with you. Oh, really? Mhm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. I'm even thinking <laughs> of donating some of my sperm oh. to you so that so we can have a super hybrid <laughs> of, of comedic <laughs> person. Okay. All right. Wouldn't that be great, Drew? Comedic what? <laughs> super comedian. We'll create we'll create okay. a super comedian. You know what I mean? Instead of me <laughs> knocking up some cocktail waitress and giving birth to a dullard, yeah. right. I'll nail Rachel and wait, we'll have wait, a super oh, improvisational let's comedian. Be, <laughs> let's be fair here. not nailing her. You're, you're just donating. donating. Right. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know there was a, I didn't know there was okay. a difference, but we can get into that All later. All right. When here I we see go. you in person. Right. Okay. Well, you don't actually have to see. You don't have to see. You can send no, I think I think it's important right. to have a sit down. It's difficult he's not in the studio. Tara. Okay. 18. Okay, question is, yeah. I've, well, actually, it's my ex-boyfriend that I'm worried about. All right. Well, what happened was that he dumped me, like, eight months ago. He dumped you eight, over him. He dumped you eight months ago, and you haven't gotten over him. How uh, long was that relationship? Like two months. So a two-month relationship. This sounds like, Adam, your 18-year-old year. Yeah, right. except for I was crying and beating off. I hadn't even been dumped yet. I, I hadn't even worked up to being dumped yet but, at but 18. When, when was that one where you had that short relationship that you were dumped and you ended up crying outside her sorority and all that stuff um that was a how dare you by the way that was a, a <laughs> long that was like a good seven month relationship and i only pined for about three years okay i beg your after pardon. it was I, well it's two months for every year you see what i'm saying right two months eight months same same right so uh, i don't know i could have been 20 yeah okay so it's the same kind of thing that tara's going through which is not uncommon for somebody your age to get these very intense attachments and then have difficulty getting over them was this the first guy you slept with no. Did you sleep with him? Yeah. Hmm. Usually, that, t my boyfriend. So what? I have a problem. What? See, I've I've got a boyfriend now, but I'm still not over my ex. Yeah, we get that. Hmm. And why did why did you take the new boyfriend then, if you weren't that into him? Because well, I thought I was over my ex, but now that he's back, he's I'm not over him. What do you mean he's back? Well, he went somewhere for like eight months and he came back. Where did he go? Why did you two break up? Like eight months ago. Why? Why? Well, because he was moving somewhere and he decided to come back. And oh, I don't boy. do long distance relationships very well. Listen, this is one of those nights, Adam. Uh, yeah. You, he decided to break up with you m solely because he was moving. Is that accurate? Exactly. Where did he move? Like California. And, and you're in Nevada somewhere, right? And he came back now by what? Change well, because he had to go to school. Came back to go to school. Yeah. Why did he know that when he left eight months ago? How well, old, how, I don't know. How old okay. is this guy, Tara? Uh, uh, hold on. Let me put her on hold for a second. Yeah, okay. First off, um, let's have Brian get her address off the air since she is in the state of Nevada. Are you going to part uh, of your class action suit? or? I'm in Nevada myself. Oh, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> I could dry up the tears, you know what I, I mean? Yeah, okay. Uh, but here's the the deal, and, and I don't know if you're thinking this, uh, Drew and Rachel, but I'm guessing this two-month relationship wasn't much of a relationship in the first place. I, I, for some reason, am convinced this guy is a total idiot. And Well, there's no doubt about that, but she's unclear on the details of the breakup, which says to me that the guy probably mm -hmm. wasn't into the thing in the first place. That's, I, I get that everything about this is fantasy, and she's defending, 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 telling us the truth. That's why it's so right. confusing to talk to her. It's like, well, what, what, what? We can't figure out what's going on. She won't let us know what's going on. That's the problem. Okay. Let's all so what should we do with her? Do you want to try to get the truth out? I'll of her? try one more. Like, let me talk like to her for tea. a moment. All right. Okay. Tara. Yeah. Uh, he is back in town now, and back in town is in Nevada, right? I was in Carson City. Okay. And you, uh, you know, he's back in town. Why? Because he contacts me. And what does he say? Well, that he wants to get back together, but... He wants to get back together or he wants to have sex? He wants to get back together. Hmm. And how does he say that? He says, I, I would like you to be my girlfriend again? Yeah. Those words? Yeah. Okay. 
and you're in a relationship that's how old now? Going the on current, three months. <clears throat> three months, and you're not this that into this guy. No, I'm into the guy I'm, I'm with now. Yeah, but not that much. No, I'm into him, like, really much. All right, then what's the phone call about? Then you seem very clear. You want to stay with your present boyfriend? No problem. Well, yeah, I want to stay with him, but the problem is, is I can't get over the other guy. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You've been if over you're him. Really, if you're really uh, if into somebody that you're with, you you can easily get over other people. It's, it's, That's like, nonsense yes, to yes. me. Maybe I, she I, felt I, rejected by the first guy because he was moving. So then it's sort of this thing of like, oh, but he wants me back. I, I, I he's, he is the unavailable guy, and that's why she's right, got right, right. You know right. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. But Adam, Rachel. there's a little wait. Rachel just dropped a little clue for you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? When you actually set her up on the date, make sure the guy's an idiot. Make sure he's not available. Make sure he mistreats her. No, I'm over her. that phase. I'm over that phase. But you understand that But I've been kind of in the here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I get it. Yeah. That's why you're alone yeah. now. Well, because I'm, I'm, yeah, now I want the available guy. The real thing, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you women, you always come back to, you always want the nice guy at the end of the party. Right. <laughs> That's right. how it works. Right. All right, Dave, 25. Hey there, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Good. What's up? Um, calling about my sister, basically. Um, when she was in high school, she's 28 years old now, but when she was in high school, she was pursued by her English teacher, uh. and the relationship went on for a little while. Uh, they kept it a secret from my parents. And they kind of concealed the whole thing. But my parents eventually found out. Uh, they confronted the guy. He promised it would end, but it didn't. So my parents involved the school's administration. And they basically forced him to resign. Um, when he resigned, it was kind of kept secret to kind of protect my sister's privacy and to make it so that it wasn't a big news thing. Hmm. And um, she kind of moved on with her life. She, like I said, she's 28 now. That was a big mistake. By the way, so, and the, you, your sister moved on with her life, and he, this guy moved on to pursue more teenagers. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. So yeah. everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. Yes. Yeah. I mean, in retrospect, they're looking back at it and they're thinking the same thing because now what's happened is the guy's moved on, um, and years later, now he's the principal of the middle school. Oh, good times. In this area. Fantastic. So I'm kind of calling to figure out how to handle this. Do I talk to her about it? Do I go to talk to the school's administration about it? Um, well, let, let's ask a couple of questions. And, and first off, imagine the balls on this guy. You get confronted. You get busted. The parents could essentially send you to jail, and they say, look, just stay away from my daughter, and we'll forget about it, and you can move on with your life, and you still come back. Oh, yeah. that That's an idiot. Yeah. Right. That, that's yeah. world class right there. Yeah. Now, how old was your sister when this guy began the relationship? Uh, as far as I know, it went from her freshman year of high school through 14. Her year. 14, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Is that 14? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Maybe there's a huge difference between 14 and 17, you know? But it's not, it's not 17. 17 is right. a sophomore, a junior or senior. It's the end of high school. Right. Okay. So so this guy needs to, something needs to be done with this guy because freshman year, that is, uh, you know, hey, bang all the seniors you want. That's <laughs> oh my always God. been, and my father was a substitute <laughs> school teacher, and he used to tell me, son, seniors, uh, free, free game, free game on. <laughs> But uh, freshmen, even my dad wouldn't do the freshmen. Yeah, <laughs> Dave, he was a sophomore. Man, I, but. I think, Dave, you need to go to someone in the administration of the school. Uh, you know, they, they need to deal with it as they please. Uh, I imagine this guy is going to fight it and uh, be a real pain in the ass about it, but at least he'll be on notice that people are watching. Right. So what do you think your sister would say if you spoke to her? Um, that's kind of one of the questions I had for you. Should I consult her first, or should I go around her? I mean, what I'm afraid of is going around her, and then it eventually gets back to her, and she finds out that I went and pursued this without her knowing. Well, how would they even know who your sister is? Um, if they trace it back to the previous school well, I, well, you worked at, they'll eventually... Yeah, but hold on. Drew, you, you always work this angle. You think people can go to the cops and start laying out names, and they're not going to ask any questions or go to the principal... People want evidence. People are going to want examples of this. Mm. I mean, they're going to need to want to know what year and who it was, and w they're going to want to see a little paperwork, I'd imagine. I don't know if anything exists, but you can't just have some guy come yeah, in right. on you know, right. hearsay yeah. and get yeah. a guy fired. No, I'm not saying that they probably they would not fire him, I would expect, even if he gets the evidence. I think, okay. though, the idea is that you got to monitor this guy very carefully. I, I, I think uh, I would talk to your sister about it. Yeah, I personally I would talk to an attorney about it too. 
I really would. If I go in and tell the school about this, am I liable for anything? That's, that's what I, why I would talk to an attorney, to see if you can get yourself in trouble by doing so. But you need to do this. Yeah. Protect yourself, but you, this needs to be done. What and do you do for a living, Dave? What do I do? Yeah. I, work, I do software development for a bank. All right. Can't you hack into this guy's computer or something and erase his, his line of credit or something? Can't you do one of those good movie things? You can't do that? I'm going to yeah, okay. crank anchors on this guy. Yeah. You want All right there, buddy. All right, Dave. Hey, uh, God bless Dave. Yeah. I mean, he's doing the right thing. Yeah. Speaking of crank Although, anchors, that, I, what? Yeah. That's Go what ahead. you're doing out in Nevada, isn't it? That's what I'm doing in Nevada. I'm doing crank yankers because crank yankers cannot be done in California. I want to go to Hawaii. Yay! 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 I want to go to Hawaii. Yes. I sat next to uh, Jim Florentine while he s talked like a retard for four hours today. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Writing down jokes on a marks a lot board while I while a comedian pretends to be retarded and calls cafeterias and asks if they have pudding. Yay! Yay! Pudding! <laughs> the hell's become of my life, Drew? <laughs> well, Rachel, you understand, what? though. You're an artist. Um, yes, I'm an artist. <laughs> Are you the one who wrote down pudding, Adam? What? What's that? Did you write down pudding? No, that was, that was pre-decided. Okay, that's good. I wrote down things like large pudding <laughs> and nummy, nummy, nummy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, should we take a little break here, Drew? Yes. Tasty. Rachel Dratch is joining us tonight. She, of course, is from Saturday Night Live. She's a dear, 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 friend. dear, dear friend who wouldn't be here uh, unless we've gotten <laughs> tickets for her brother <laughs> to go see Coldplay. But yeah. uh, I'll deal with uh, Danny on my own terms. Okay, good. <laughs> so uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back after this. Love line. Love line. We'll be right back. Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. I am in Las Vegas working on the Crank Yankers, and uh, Drew is back in Los Angeles. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Rachel Dratch joins us tonight from Saturday Night Live. Hello. Going into <laughs> your fourth season? Yes. Yes. And let me just tell you guys a little something about gambling. Okay. Because this uh -oh. whole gambling thing has not worked out for me at all in the last, like, six years. Mm -hmm. Is it ever supposed to work out? No, no. But, you know, you figure <laughs> if you just come out and you play 100 bucks, a couple hundred bucks, and you play 21, and you come out to Vegas 10 times a year, three days, at, three times out of those 10 times, you might win. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. This... This, it, see, here's the problem with me. I don't want to gamble. I'm forced to gamble because of the guys I hang out with. Right. And, and here's exactly how my life works in gambling. It, it all, it became crystal clear in the uh, lobby of the Bellagio today when uh, Daniel Kellison, mm. Diamond Daniel Kellison. Of course. The, uh, you know, you know they Diamond know him well. well. Yes. Yes, he is the, uh, he's the boss of uh, yeah. Rachel's brother who works on the uh, man show. Right. Diamond likes to gamble. And, uh, I mean, he'll, he'll get up uh, 18 grand over here if he's oh. here for a couple of days. Oh, oh my God. And, uh, and uh, Cousin Sal, Jimmy's Cousin Sal, who's <laughs> not, it, it's, it's unfair to people who have a gambling problem to say he has a gambling problem because <laughs> this guy's essentially a bookie. <laughs> and they, and I, all I want to do is check into the hotel at 7 o'clock at night. We're done with work. I want to go to my room, take a little nap, and uh, come to Loveline. And he says, we're going to play one hand. We'll just put 100 bucks down on it. We'll keep walking right through the casino. Oh, and I say, right. well, good luck, fellas. Yeah, right. And they say, seriously, give me 100 bucks. You check in. We'll play one hand for you. That'll be that. Ugh. Either you win or you lose. And I think on myself, I, I can't just continuously lose. It's impossible that I lose nonstop 
for the rest of my life. And Daniel wins a lot, and so does Sal. So I'll give my $100 to Daniel. You play one hand. I'm going to check in, and I'll uh, see at the table. Just one hand, $100. The hand he plays... Now, he sits down at the table, and they deal him blackjack Daniel. with my $100. Daniel? Oh, yes. Oh, my. King and an ace. But guess what the dealer has? <laughs> blackjack. Blackjack. <laughs> and by the way... I just got back from Reno, and I was playing blackjack all night and never got one goddamn blackjack. They shouldn't even be... I, I have to call it 21. I can't even call it blackjack because that does not exist in my lexicon. But I did get blackjack, and the dealer got blackjack, so they let it ride. Oh. And they played one more hand, and, uh, of oh. course, they busted on that one. Yeah, of course. Um, but now, how, how, often do you, how often do you get blackjack and not win? Especially one hand. You play um, one hand and you get blackjack. Go ahead, Rachel. I, I'm I'm one of those girly gamblers who like I I played the slot machines a couple times and then once I got sucked in by that game that the quarters are supposed to fall over the edge of the thing. You know that oh, game? Oh yes, yes. They have the pu little push hands on yes, there. Yes, that thing is a scam. Yeah, Don't you, do what, it, Adam. No, what do I you know do? you're you tempted. Just... Oh, I know, but here's the, you it's flip like, the quarter well, up. No, and... you drop a quarter and it falls, and like all the quarters are poised yeah. over the edge, yeah. and it looks like they're all going to come crashing down, but only like two ever do. Know, yeah. It's, yeah. And that's when it's Stay away stuff. from that thing. This is my yeah, girly but, gambler guy. Yeah, but how much? I mean, seriously, you could lose $33 playing that for an hour well, and a half. I don't know. I lost 100 in the slots. To me, that's yeah. a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, was, I guess uh, hanging out with Sal, that's like. Chump change, yeah. but that, anyway. that was over the course of like, of like a many day, hours, a day. right? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. nothing. I've never won anything. In the thought that these things are games of chance is cr incorrect. They are adult entertainment. It's an that's entertainment right. fee you're paying for that's the, for right. the for the privilege of having fun gambling, but it and is it, not a game of chance. You know, one thing uh, I didn't know either until I uh, spoke to the uh, woman who picked me up from the airport, who used to work for like Mandalay Bay. Is, you know, when these high rollers, when they bring them into town, they give them a line of credit, yeah. 50 grand, 100 grand, 500 grand. They don't pay it up if they lose a couple hundred grand when they leave, oftentimes. They, they have, let it ride? They have 30 pay days it? to pay it. Right. Oh. So imagine this. You come into Vegas, you lose a couple hundred grand, you go back home to New York, and you got someone calling you a week later saying, we're going to need the 200 grand. Nice. True. How insane would you go? <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to lose it while you're at the table. Yeah. And they did lose it at the table, but it's got to hurt that much more paying two or three hundred grand three or four weeks later when you're back at home and your wife wants to know what the hell's going on. Oh, oh true. <laughs> I can't even. My brain won't go there. All right. I'm Let's having, go to some calls. I'm having a panic attack. Tammy's 25. Hi, Rachel. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. Hey, I'm having a problem. I've been seeing um, a certain person off and on, which is one of my best friends for nine years. Well, I'm currently seeing him, but I've never been able to have an orgasm with him, with anybody else in between time when I haven't seen him. No problem, even by myself, no problem. I don't know what the problem is with him, though. Can you well, give us what? The good news is, is that if he's listening, he'll kill himself, and <laughs> you won't have to deal with this problem anymore. Can you give us any hints? Is there anything about the act with him that makes it different? I don't know. I don't know if it's because I'm too self-conscious around him. Why, why are you self-conscious? Well, I used to be a little bit bigger. I used to, right now, I'm about 130 pounds, 5'7", and before I used to be um, about 180, but I always had this in my mind that he wanted somebody slimmer, so um, throughout time, it first became a thing to lose weight for him, but throughout time, it was just a mental thing with me where I had to be toner. To be happy for me, not yeah. But for now here, else. here you are, and yeah, you're and still I'm still having a problem. It. But I, I, what is it with this relationship? It was a nine-year friendship, but you kind of had benefits. But he was kind of your yes. boyfriend, but he kind of wasn't. What, what's exactly. up here? What's up? What is the deal? That was the whole thing. It's off well, the whole, and on. Yeah, that's the whole thing. And no wonder you can't be vulnerable with him. You're, you're never really connected to him. You never can be vulnerable because he's going to take off, or he won't let you in. Yeah. I, I feel that's a problem. Like, maybe it's because, you know, we've been too close as friends, or maybe it's because I still feel too self-conscious. No, look, or... look. All right, wait, wait a wait. minute. Here's the deal. Adam, let me just cut through this really quick. He still considers this a friendship. He doesn't consider it a boyfriend so much, right? 
Exactly. If we were to ask him, he said, well, I've got this Tammy. She's great. Whenever I need to have sex, she's always available. Of course you can't be intimate with him. So Please, what do you think is going on? This guy's this guy's probably has other girlfriends. Or, I mean, what are you doing? Well, as as of right now, he doesn't. He's totally different from when he was before. He is more attentive. He's more affectionate. Um, before he was going through um, a little problem where he was on some, I guess he was uh, taking crank or something, but he's been through <laughs> rehab. Oh I know he's God. a total loser, what you guys are thinking, <laughs> but he's totally no. regrouped from that for um, more than four years now. He's sober four years, doesn't use any pot or any alcohol. No. He doesn't Neither. use anything. Okay. And then uh, okay. Well, let, let me ask a couple of questions. First okay. off, can you regroup alone? That's number one. Don't yeah. answer. Yeah. Just think about you it. Mean without just treatment? think about it. What do you mean alone? I just mean, is it mathematically oh, possible to regroup? Yes, right. Can one person regroup? Right, right. I, again, don't answer it. Let's all just think on that. For Rachel a wants to kill herself right now. No, I was laughing at that question. <laughs> yes. Can you regroup alone? That's all. And Thanks, baby. That, that, was good, that was a good one. That's why you're Our dear, super baby is going to be really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, go oh, on. Maybe we'll mix in some of Drew's sperm, too, so he's got some book smarts, you know? Okay. Does well on the SATs. <laughs> right. Knows how to save a buck. Lord knows oh. he'll know how to save a buck. <laughs> oh but. Now, Rachel's uh, already got that part. <laughs> okay, so, so Tammy, well, I like, don't think you... she's been in a relationship with this guy. I agree no, with Drew. Absolutely. Yeah, like, are you I, are you guys officially dating, dating, or are you nope. just hanging out? Well, kind of, sort of, both, but I guess more on his level, it's more of just a friendship thing, but when we go out anywhere, it's, no. he introduces me, but, you know. Drew is right. I mean, you would like to be this guy's girlfriend, and he does not want to be your boyfriend. That's it, he, period. He has little intermittent periods when he's willing to sort of uh, hang on to you for a while, but ultimately he's not interested. Ultimately, you know that, and ultimately you don't want to be vulnerable because and of that. give up the orgasm to that's him, right. and that's what it is. And your vagina's right. you got to start listening to it. And, or and trust your vagina. Adam, that is a very good piece of advice. God yes, you, you need to regroup with your vagina. Because <laughs> then you could regroup, right? That's two. That's two of you, yeah. Right. And trust the vagina. Trust the input from the vagina. That's the, right. Yeah. Trust the vagina. Lance, 19. Yes. What's going on, Lance? Oh, not much. Is this Adam and Drew? Yeah. How's it going, guys? We're good. Good. And Rachel um, Dratch, too, and by Turn the your way. radio down or TV or whatever that is. I'm having a little trouble trying to find a girlfriend here in L.A. I moved here about three months ago, and I work on an ambulance now here in Englewood. Yeah. Where'd you move from? Turn your radio I, down. Turn your radio down. I'll just okay. hang up on this idiot, would you? Okay. Oh, my God. You guys are harsh. Well, <laughs> you know, the phone screeners tell them, turn the radio down. Okay. It's the cardinal sin of calling in a radio show to have that radio up. And just get back to him in a little bit, Drew. Okay. All right? he, we, he gets okay. punished. Okay, okay, R okay. Richard, okay. 19. Hi, how you doing, guys? Good. Good. Love this show. I've been listening since um, Ricky Rackman. Quite some time. Thank Adam's you. Adam's a fucking a great addition to the show and drew his, his expertise is always there when you need it thank you so i just had one quick question uh, for rachel mm -hmm. um what can i do if i have uh, itchy down there <laughs> itchy what? down there i i have itchy down there <laughs> come on you know what can you do if you go to a japanese spa yeah and uh oh my and you lord come back with crabs it's not this cool right do you know see, this guy? No, Rachel? but now I see like on now I see how this works because on the computer it says how long did it take you to get on SNL? I have itchy down but there. But in reality, it's I have itchy down there. Right. See the the so, screeners okay. are, are getting. I don't know. Stuff's getting past the screeners tonight. Right. Okay. Let's try this one. What's, what's that, Adam? <laughs> I was going to ask her how did she get on SNL. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had itchy down there, and and that did um, it, huh? Um, I was at Second City in Chicago. Which is an improv comedy theater extravaganza, and then SNL comes through and they scout there and at the Groundlings in LA, which Adam, I believe you did for a while. That's right. Well, that's anyway, right. he was yes, he was dismissed from the Groundlings. Dismissed. I, was dismissed. I didn't know yeah. about that, but um, but yeah, so that's how Adam. <laughs> that's kind of nice, though. I mean, do you ever you ever just think about? I mean, if you grow up and you, you're doing comedy or you're dreaming of doing comedy, becoming a cast member. 
on Saturday Night Live is really like growing up a baseball fan right. and playing center field for the Yankees. In the World Series. It is. Yeah. It was. It's total dream come true job. Yeah, definitely. I I'm completely appreciative of it. Right. It's Except a fantasy for the, job. The, the baseball analogy is not quite right because they make millions and millions, <laughs> right. And millions right, right. True. of dollars. True. But it's it's still fun though. All right. <laughs> okay. You want to take a break here, Drew? Yep. All right. Rachel Dratch is here from Saturday Night Live. I'm in uh, Vegas. Drew's in L.A. And we'll be right back after this. Love line. Love line. 1-800-LOVE-191. Uh, back in a minute. back with the love line i'm adam that's drew rachel dratch has joined us in the studio tonight from saturday night live she's going into her fourth season and uh i'm out here in nevada working on some cranky anchors drew is uh in los angeles drew yeah who's coming in tomorrow night do you know no 311 311 tomorrow yes. night always good to see 311 yeah they're dear 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 friends yes. as hey, rachel dratch is well, that, that's the whole thing. I have well, many dear... On. Anderson's playing some 311 music. Wait a minute. Yes, those are my is dear friends. Is that the I have be. no idea. Yes. But the po- yeah. point is, is Rachel's a dear, dear, dear friend. I just need one more dear than Rachel. Yeah. Rachel Dranch is, yeah, she's a okay. triple dear friend, okay. whereas 311 is a double dear friend. Okay, thank you. Right. <laughs> All right, Drew, what's happening? Rachel went to college in the New England, too. I did. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys didn't go to the same college. No, oh, but I almost went. I, I almost went to to Drew's college. I chose a different college, but I sort of wish I'd chosen Drew's. Yeah, because then you could say you went to Drew's college, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I wish I'd done instead of cleaning carpets <laughs> in North Hollywood for three years. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. I make it all back now. She went to Dartmouth. It's a little different than uh, cleaning carpets. Dartmouth is is good, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, what's the name of the team in Dartmouth? Because, well, uh, it's a controversy because in the old days it was the Dartmouth Indians, and then of course uh-huh. that's politically incorrect. And they, now it's just Big Green. When did they change that? <laughs> um, I don't know, in the seventies or something. Late seventies, yeah. And it was, it was a big like. There's still alumni that are pissed off about it. And Drew, what it. about uh, aren't the, uh, aren't the, Lord the Blue Bloods pissed the, the Lord, off that they're the taking the Lord Jeff name? Well, Lord Jeff was uh, famous for killing a bunch of Indians oh. uh, and for having invented germ warfare. Put smallpox yeah. in a bunch of blankets and gave it to Indians. Is that see, nice? That's my thing. As is a white nice? guy, oh I don't I don't want any white mascot Lord Jeff types. <laughs> and when are us when white people going to band together and get rid of the Lord Jeffs? It's sort of bizarre, though, that having an Indian as a mascot is not considered something of an honor. And while Lord Jeff is OK. Well, I, I under I understand the sort of generic Indian term, but I don't know. To me, the warrior and the brave, that kind of thing. Yeah. That kind of thing's sort of a tip of the hat, isn't it? Yeah. I thought. I, I, you, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I I, the Indian, the Indian part, I understand because the Indian is just sort of almost it just it's a generic term, you know. All right. But but warrior, that sounds pretty decent, and I didn't know it only pertained to American Indians. Do you know what I mean? I mean, didn't didn't um, weren't there great warriors in Grecian times? Yes. D- do you know what I'm saying? Yes. I don't know but how they lay the, claim to the warrior part. But maybe the the visual. It's the it's is the, the mascot part. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's well, the that, drunken guy who's riding a <laughs> slot machine through, uh, you know, at halftime or, or each time they score the touchdown. I think that's the part they object to. Right. Nice. True. Yeah. Wouldn't that be a great mascot for an Indian? <laughs> a, a drunken guy. You'd get him in. Oh, you'd no, get him in I like a. <laughs> you get him in like one of those cigar store Indian kind of, you know, you you give him that Indian with the hat and the long braids hanging down, and you'd have those zingers coming off his head, so you knew he was drunk, like a, in a cartoon. <laughs> and he'd be waving around a jug that had triple X's on it, right, right. and he'd be riding a horse that was done up like a slot machine. Nice, Adam, you're a genius. Let's keep going. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's see. This is. I still feel that. Okay, go ahead. 
He's still bad about <laughs> what? I still feel yeah. bad for that EMT who got cut off. Yeah, he's still being punished. Okay. This is uh, Katrina. Uh, uh, yeah. We 20. can talk to him next <laughs> one. Yeah. Katrina. Ka- oh, hi. Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah. Uh, my question is that um, in May, I slept with this guy. And uh, he basically, we started having sex. Basically? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And um. when we were having sex, he asked me if he could take the condom off, and I told him clearly, I go, no, we cannot have sex without a condom, and we continued having sex. But in the middle, I had to go to the bathroom, and when I came back, I didn't know he took the condom off. And we went back to having sex, and I asked him, do you still have a condom on? And he wouldn't answer me, and I didn't really figure it out until he pulled out and came between my legs. So he, my qu- he pulled huh? out before he ejected. So you're not, you're, you didn't get pregnant. Okay. No, I didn't. I, right. I went and got tested for that. Okay. All right. And uh, my question is, uh, I have, I've been rolling this around since then, mm. is like, could it be considered rape? It's an interesting question. No, well, I, I wouldn't, I don't think it could be rape. It's, I wouldn't think it could rape, be something. I think deception. Yeah, it's something. It's be- a little slimy. Because, but. Yeah. I don't know that you'd have to ask an attorney. That's a that's a no. really it's a legal question. No, it's, not a it's not that's a great question. It's not a great question, but a legal it's, question. Well, what kind of question is it then? Is it a techni- yeah, or technically was it rape? No. You have to look up the legal definition of rape then, and then see if no. That but I it? mean, there there are things that you, there are things you can do. I mean, if someone gives you a venereal disease, for he instance, did. there's legal recourse. Okay. Then he knew he had something. Uh, he didn't tell me. What did he give you? Warts. He gave me a uh, gentle towards my cervix. Yeah, of course, but th- that's hard to prove that that's where it came from, right? Uh, I know he is the between him and my boyfriend now. He is the only guy that I have had uh, unprotected sex with. Yeah, but e- even having unprotected sex, you can get the warts. Even having protected sex, sex rather. So where did you a- meet this dreamboat? <laughs> Over the internet. No, oh, delightful. And oh how does it God. go when you when you say to the guy, uh, uh, oh, my God, was that painful? Did you guys hear that? What was that? I don't know, but if it happens again, I'm going into a <laughs> post-traumatic stress <laughs> fit. We didn't really hear it loudly the way you did, I'm sure. You a got gurgle? one of those, sat- no, it's like a satellite zap. It's oh, like this very loud oh. white noise in your head. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to clean my pants up now, so I'm not <laughs> sure what my question was, but... Here's what I think my question would have been had I not been traumatized that way. How does it work where the guy's back in you and you're saying to him, do you got that condom on and he's not answering? I didn't know. And, well, I was just asking. I kept on asking him and, like, he didn't answer me whatsoever. Hmm. That's what I'm, that's the part I'm curious about. I mean. Didn't you take him not answering as a sort of, as yes? At least troubling? Yes, I was ready to push him off before he did. He pulled out. So he uh-huh. pulled out right then. I see. And you, you met him over the internet and had sex with him. How we, how soon we after that? For a while, and we were just—he was just supposed to come up for the weekend. We were going to go to the beach. <laughs> Katrina, <laughs> what were you think, thinking? Think about well, what that sounds like oh, as a guy. He was oh. just supposed to come up for the weekend. Are you kidding? What? What? Katrina, what were you thinking? All right. Ah, she made a mistake. That's all right. Um, so here's the deal. I don't think, I just don't think you're going to be able to pursue this legally. I'm not saying this guy's not an a-hole, and I'm not saying you weren't victimized. I just don't know what the hell you would do about it at this point. Oh, there's do nothing, you, Drew? No, there's nothing you can do no. about it. But the question is, would that be actually a rape? Or is there some other category of transgression that that can be sort of... I would, you know, I would, consider. I would think there, there is another category. I just don't think it would be rape. Yeah, I agree with you. It's maybe not it's fair like, to all the guys who actually rape uh, to maybe, call that rape. Maybe it's some sort of sexual assault or something. Could be. Anyway, but yeah. th- this late day, what's she going to do about it? And she, thank God, she has a boyfriend. Maybe she learned something from this. This whole internet thing, boy. Oh, imagine if that is... had been around when you were nineteen. Oh well, my you, God! You, you know what? You know what guys can do. I'm, I'm imagining because I don't know anything about the internet, but guys can. Work the internet like they're fishing with five or six poles all in the water at the same time, you know, seeing what gets a nibble. I mean, you could have relationships going all over the country and they could be in various stages and they could all just be going simultaneously. And the whole idea is to come out there and visit them on the weekend. Adam, you're scaring me. 
Do you know what I mean, though? You claim to I mean, know nothing you know, about the internet, yet you seem to have masterminded an incredible scenario I, just, for how I'm one would conduct oneself. Imagining, of course. I'm imagining this is what guys do. Of course, you're just imagining. I understand. You get a, get yeah, a, yeah, imagine. Drew, yeah, yeah. oh, shut up. All right, we got to take a you break. Know I don't, you we know have I can't to take even a break. turn on the goddamn computer, you my, idiot. My, I think he doth protest Jesus too much. Jesus Christ. What do you think, Rachel? Well, Drew, don't even kid He's around. He's on the defensive. Please. My goodness. <laughs> the, wow. Drew, I, no, I you are scaring me, goddammit. I don't mind it when you make a joke once every three years, but please... I'm not offended at the allegation. I'm offended at your attempted humor. That's okay. all right. <laughs> that I accept. Okay, now you're starting to make sense again. We got to take okay. a break. All right, we'll be right back. All right. all right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call's all you need to make. Call the Dateline. Date 877-889-DATE. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. I'm in Las Vegas tonight. Dr. Drew is uh, back in Los Angeles. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Rachel Dratch is in studio tonight. She, of course, is on Saturday Night Live going into her fourth <laughs> season. And let me uh, ask you guys a question. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, uh, I got to get myself a cab back from uh, the studio tonight. Are we going to go through this again? Yeah, well, here's the question. How do you think I should play this? Because uh, last time, Uh-oh. I think I spoke about this at the end of the show. Oh, yes. I uh, I got a number from the uh, cab that drove me in, and uh, they said, uh, yeah, just call this, uh, you know, at uh, 1145, and the cab will be there at 12. No, cannot have. <laughs> I called at 1145, and the cab dispatcher said, we don't do timed calls. No. You, you must call when you need the cab. And I said, well, I need the cab at 12, and it's 11.45. And she said, well, then call back at 12. And I said, well, how long does the cab take after I call back? And she said, 15 to 20 minutes. Mm. And I said, well, seeing as how it's 15 minutes from the time that I'd like to be picked up, why don't we just go ahead and dispatch the cab? Yeah. And she repeated the refrain, we do not take timed calls. Oh. And I said, but if and I need the cab in 15 minutes and it's 15 minutes to 12, then why not send the goddamn cab at 12? And she said, call back when you need the cab. And then I said, I need the cab now. And she said, <laughs> oh, that was so painful. We didn't get hear that here. Oh, my God. Oh, that was say? another big static blast. But oh. uh, she said uh, she wasn't going for it. I couldn't yeah. fool her that easily. So I ended up getting a ride to the strip club with uh, <laughs> one of the brothers who worked Thank down God. the hall at the urban station. <laughs> but I don't know. Now, what urban. would you do if you were me? Would you call tonight at 1145 and say, I need a cab this moment? Yeah. Do you have an engineer you're working with? Well, he's split. Oh. Is there anyone? All right. Yes. I, I think I we ought to. That. Yeah. Like 11, 10 to, 10 to 12, we ought to give you a break. And you 10 go to make 12. The, yeah. And you go make the phone call. Well, I, you know, when we when we break for our, our uh, eleven thirty eight no, ten no, minutes do it, late, do it, do, no, 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 do it at ten two because you got that's it's sort of it's a decent walk out to the street there and stuff and you know the distances yeah. are big in that town. All right, you know what I'm saying? All right, All right. good times, good, good times. times. Here, here we go. Here's Brian, who's twenty eight. Hey, Rachel, Adam, uh, Doctor Drew, how you doing? Brian, good. good. Uh, Rachel, I just wanted to know, like, what were you doing before <laughs> you were uh, before you started at uh, Second City? And, like, did you have, like, a full-time job and then do Second City as, like, a second thing or something? Um, well, I I went to college and then I got involved in improv comedy there and then I moved out to Chicago. And, I'm like, I auditioned for the training center at Second City and I didn't get in right when I moved to Chicago. So I, d- I did temping. That was my main form of income was just being a temp. What kind of jobs did you have? I worked in, like, I was just, like, a secretary person. Like, I worked for, um... 
a pediatrician and uh, I don't know, just all over town kind of thing. Oh, I also worked in a mental hospital for a summer too because I thought I might want to be in psychology because I was still kind of not sure. But anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other story. So then um, then I uh, finally, after like three years, I got into the touring company of Second City. And when you do that, you sort of go out here and there and I was still temping. And then, then I got on the main stage. And once you're on the main stage, then you don't need another job. So, oh, how you're, much you're, yeah. How much does that pay when you get on the it main pays stage? Like, I don't know, maybe like 500 bucks a week or something. But in really? Chicago, that's totally enough to live off of. Hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, if you, you get on the Groundlings uh, main stage, you don't get any money. I know. I've heard that. Yeah. Actually, actually, I was just in L.A. this past week checking out the Groundlings. Oh, yeah? So I was thinking about, like, I wanted to pursue that. Uh-huh. So I just wanted to ask you, like, about that and everything. Well, I know, like, at Saturday Night Live, like, about half the people are from the Groundlings and maybe half are from Second City. And um, then a couple are stand-ups. A couple extras are stand-ups. But, yeah, the Groundlings, I don't know. Adam's done that, so he would know more. But I think they both, base, Second City and the Groundlings both basically have the same sort of sketch, you know, show and with an emphasis on improv comedy. Um, but they both have this sort of hierarchy that you have to start at the bottom and work your way up kind of thing. Well, I, so, I did have a sort of a two-part question because I wanted yeah. to ask Adam, like, I just started doing stand-up also, and I just want, like, I'm trying to get into all this, and I know that Adam mentioned one time that he's done stand-up for a while and he hated it, and Adam was yes. wondering, like... How know, dare you? A while was, like, three times? Oh, no, I, I did it off and on for years. I just, I just never really got anywhere. I mean, I hated it because uh, I didn't get paid anything and I wasn't it, any good. It sucked, and, yeah. You had to go wait in line at those uh, at those uh, long, long um, open mic nights, and guys abused you. You know, the guys who run those open mics when you do your stand-up are frustrated comedians, so they're abusive mm. to other people that are trying to get into comedy, too. And I'd just like to take this moment to tell all of them to kiss my hairy ass. <laughs> Yes, I'm literally a millionaire now. No thanks to you, jackholes. Speaking, Thank speaking you. of uh, kissing your ass, here's Lance, who's 19. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm working here in Englewood. He's the EMT, Adam. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah, I work on an ambulance. I was yeah. in the rig sitting in there. That's why the radio was on. My partner wanted to listen to it, so I'm sitting All outside right. now. Okay. Um, I'm having a hard time getting a girlfriend here in L.A. So every time I sit down to dinner, they ask what I do for a living. I tell them, and then they ask, you know, about the worst call I've ever been on. And after you tell them, they look at you in a totally different way. And it's just, it's hard to deal with that because... After that, like, they'll stop calling you, and you can't get a hold of them for some reason. It just it gets really retarded after a while. Well, wh- what, what, if, what if you tone down the worst call you've ever been on? Like, now I'm thinking, I wonder how gory your description is. I don't know. No, it's not that bad. No, like, I'll okay. tell them, the worst call I've ever been on, I saw a six-year-old get hit by a car. But, mm. I mean, yeah. other than that, you just eat anything you tell them. If you, even if you tell them, you know, I don't really like to talk about that kind of stuff. Girl, well, listen, you, you got you to gotta do what Drew did when he was in medical school and he was trying to date uh, underclassmen. You just, you just do that thing where you, you, you ham it up a little bit. You talk about saving lives and it gets a little boring playing God. And uh, one time he had to uh, do emergency tracheotomy using a ballpoint pen to save uh, uh, the Pope's life who had rolled his Pope mobile or something. I mean, you, you got to embellish it a little bit. You got to make it a little more glamorous. But Adam, you know you what put, I'm put your put your uh, love line hat on for a second, and r- think about the fact that he's blaming it all on this, and we've never <laughs> we've you know come on, that's yeah, never you, and no no way. No, it's not all that. I mean, I've had a girlfriend before, but it's just lately because I moved here three months ago. Oh. Yeah, but it, it's because you scraped up a six year old and brought them to the hospital <laughs> that they won't you didn't date you. Scrape them up. It's not. I'm not saying that. I mean, I've gone out on dates with him. It's just. All right, just just think about that reaction for a second, Adam. Just think about how that he made you feel. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I think he's a jack off. There you go. All okay. right, but also I said just because you scraped up a six year old and took them to the hospital, he gets angry. And he said, "I didn't scrape them up. I went on dates with them." <laughs> no, no. He's probably not a great listener. Yeah. All right. But so three months isn't. I mean, three months. That's pretty. You're new to L.A., right? Well, now that yeah. he expects, I'm trying to make he, excuses he expects in three months to have you know, I know, so landed someone, right. it's like, hey, come on. No, but Drew, isn't it true that every time we talk to a guy who's having a little trouble with the ladies, after a couple sentences, we understand why he's having a little trouble with the ladies? And it's, it's even more obvious when they blame it on something completely spurious. 
Right. They want to blame it on something. You go, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Right. Because it has and nothing to do with it. Here's the through line, and uh, Rachel. Yes. Uh, oh my God! There goes that thing oh, again. No. I swear, I am going to have to kill myself. Does it sound that something is like, crazy? Does it sound a little like this? No. no. Anything? It sounds a little like that. Yeah. But uh, much, much worse yeah, than that. Whiter and louder. It, this is really loud and really staticky. Okay, I'm unnerved now. Officially unnerved. <laughs> Are you happy, Anderson? Okay, let's go on with our calls. No, oh. I, here's what I want to say. Um, these guys have difficulty scoring with women because they don't treat women like they're human beings. Right. And I'm not saying you should treat women like human beings, <laughs> but you can't let them know that you're not treating them like human beings. Oh, my God. His whole thing is he's trying to pick an angle. Yeah. You know these guys we're talking about all the time? They, they, they treat picking up a woman like they treat uh, catching a marlin. Right. They, they want to figure out the right time to do it and the right bait to use, and then they start blaming other extraneous Yeah, the wind uh, was wrong. Was when in, it doesn't do right, it. Right. Yeah, they're just, they're just, they're not human beings, and the thing that women pick up on is that they're not human beings, yeah. and they're not treating them like human beings. Right, that's right. Thank you. This is uh, Danielle, 20. Yeah. yeah. Hi, sorry. What's going on? Um, I actually had a question because... What are you sorry about? We haven't even talked to you yet. Why are you sorry? What? Why are you sorry? Oh, because I'm just kind of nervous. Okay. Okay. All right. Deep breath. Um, Deep breath. <gasps> and go. Okay. So I had a question. Um, I'm talking to my stepdad right now, and he was actually... Um, he wasn't charged with child abuse, but... Um, supposedly he sexually molested my little sister, my older sister. Now they have, um, doctor's proof that he did sexually molest my little sister. Mm -hmm. But now she, like, wants to see him and stuff, and mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a good idea. Is that it's his biological daughter? Yes. And how old is she? She'll be 16 next month. Wow. Do And why were you talking to him about this? Well... Oh, I wasn't talking to him about it. He, he's been, I've just been talking to him, you know, just talking. And um, uh -huh. so he asked me, you know, if he, I could, you know, make it so that they could communicate. Didn't you ask Adam why she's talking to him? No, no, no. Well, I, I was, did mean why she's talking to him about this, mm. which is the way she initially sort of phrased it. Oh. But as it turns out now, well, maybe she is talking to him about this. Mm-hmm. Are you talking to him about this? Um, well, we don't. I don't ever talk about him being um, ever molesting them because mm -hmm. he says he never did. And, I and see. So, so has the court separated him from the children? Yes, yes. All right. So he needs to talk to his attorney about getting things back. You should have nothing to do with this. And what about the older one? How old is she? 22. And how come you weren't molested? Well, I don't really remember a lot. Uh-oh. So I don't. Well, he used to he used to beat me up. Oh my God! Why do okay. you, why do you communicate with this? I don't know. Yes, head. I don't. And know. what and what's up? Uh, listen, as I, I've always said, you know, this guy deserves all the abuse you can hand out, but mom deserves a nice swift kick in the crotch too. Yes. Well, my bringing mom this a hole home. My mom is mentally ill, and we got taken away from her when we were ten. When oh I'm my 10. God, Danielle. Well, then how did this guy get into the picture? Um, well, he was allowed to see us for a while, but then, you know, the court intervened and said he was not allowed to see us anymore. And um, and then I went to a group home because I started getting into trouble. Mm. And um, and then we we connected, and I just started talking to him. And that's, like, one question. I don't understand, like, why I talked to him. I don't understand. Well, no. why. well hold on a second. I just want to get I want to get something straightened out here. Okay. This guy's your stepdad. Right. But he has a biological daughter as well who's 16. Yes. And another biological daughter who's 22. No, that's his stepdaughter. That's that's your sister? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Daniel, let me answer your question. Why do you keep going back to an abusive a-hole who abused your sisters, who was responsible for you being homeless, basically? And it's it's really the same thing that young children do. When you've been highly, severely traumatized, as you have been in childhood, it arrests your development, the emotional development, the character development. And so some of the strategies, some of the behaviors you manifest end up being the same as they would have been if you were six years old or eight years old. 
And one of the things that young children do is that no matter how awful parents are, they keep going back. They keep going back. They still love them. They still are open to them. They still turn to them. It's all they know how to do is to turn to the people that they're responsible for, for their caretaking, even though when they turn to them, they may get abused or rejected or abandoned or sexually abused. God only knows. You are still doing that. Yeah, because I feel so bad for him. I understand it's still dad and he's still a man you love, but there's a difference between the dad that you have in your head, the one that you wish him to be, and the s-hole, the s-head that he actually is. Well, let me ask you this, Drew. This is interesting, and uh, I hope my parents aren't listening. Uh oh. I know they're not. <laughs> but let me ask you this. But your, your grandma might be. My grandma might be, but I think she may be asleep by now. But yeah. you know, Drew, how many times have I called my dad a pussy on the air? A million. A million times. He has never, ever said a word to me about it, <laughs> and not because he wouldn't. It's just because I know he never hears his maybe, show. Maybe it's just because he's a pussy. <laughs> that, that may have something to do with it. But uh, the, the, my dad being a puss aside, uh, here's what I'm curious about. My parents weren't the greatest when I was growing up. And uh, they weren't abusive, no wholesale abuse, no no alcohol, nothing like that, no sexual abuse. They were just kind of not present, into their own ass, and uh, out to lunch a little bit. Oh, oh, my God. I just got a huge blast of static again. Maybe it was my dad rolling over in bed that did it. But here's the thing. I still have an attitude toward them like screw them half the time, maybe three-quarters of the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you had like, a... like, okay. But here's the thing: they weren't great parents. They were all right, but they weren't great. And now I'm an adult, and my thing is like, all right, you weren't, you weren't great parents, and now I'm not a great son, well, and we're even. Th there's two it, things that occur to me. One is, how come you need to be around someone who abused you more? And I know right. she does. That's she right. needs it more than I do. If her, if her parents were just sort of mediocre to crappy, yes, she'd probably be able to move on with her life. That's right. You have to. It's the ones that are really horrible that the kids can't get enough of that's the irony yes, of it that isn't is the, it that is the irony and i don't know why god set our brains up that way but that's that's the way it's set up and the other <laughs> thing is you've had thousands of dollars of treatment years Thank and you. years of treatment and so Thank things you. are a little different for you yeah but my little different thing is just sort of indifference i mean i'm not but really it, cured it's, it's it was really, like yeah you are it's really hard to predict what you might have been like had you not had the treatment yeah, but I, I just mean in regards to my own family. Like, I, you know, they're decent people. We just weren't that close growing up, and now we're not that close now because we weren't then. But, I see, I think you wouldn't as, have been as good at being a bad son. Oh, really? You see what I'm saying? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I think I think I just had a breakthrough. <laughs> Drew told me I wouldn't be as effective at being a crappy son had I not spent thousands on therapy. Is he? Yeah, well, I, I, I think uh, young Danielle needs to do that herself. And she needs some I, treatment. It, She's it, got it, breaks, it breaks my heart to see people yes. uh, feeling sort of indebted to mm. abusers. Mm. And, and, and uh, if she can't get it from him, she'll find another willing, abusive a-hole male. Okay, to, to so let's just try to infuse too. a little strength into her and okay. tell her right, go. you are not obligated to this guy in any way. This guy made his bed completely he made everyone's bed and as i've said many a time i don't want to live in a society where guys have sex with their daughters and then the me then, then the other daughter forgives them i don't want to live in that society i don't want to live in a society you know it's like this guy uh who just killed this girl and now he got the death sentence mm. good What's the alternative? You go over and rape and kill some four-year-old girl in your trailer and nothing happens? Is that is that's the society you want to live in? That's a scarier society than the one that puts a guy like that down. This is the way it's supposed to be. Please, have some strength. Don't worry about this guy. And, Thank um, you. Actually, I actually had one more question. Yeah? Um, no, I'm done with my rant. Okay, so like you were saying, if I don't get the abuse from him, I'll get it from somewhere else. Yeah. Well, I've been in a relationship for almost three years now, and we just had a daughter like four months ago. Uh. But um, it's not like he's abusive or anything, but I like do everything for him, and he still like does nothing for me. Oh. And yeah. I don't understand. Well, I, you know what? That's probably the least... Um, 
Yeah, sort of that's the best way. That's as good as we could have hoped. That's at this right. Point. If, it, if there's not wholesale abuse in the relationship, we are greatly relieved. The fact that he's just not available, we would expect that because for you, vulnerability, intimacy means abuse. You would you would create that because that's what you expect. You need in order to feel that intimacy. And so just just stay with this. Try to try to create create stability on behalf of your child. This is Susan. Is thirty one. Hi. Um, I've been on um, Depo Provera for about a year now, mm. and I've been experiencing some abnormal bleeding the last couple of shots, which I understand is not normal. And no, I no, heard what's you... a, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. So, so you've had the shot four times in the last year, mm -hmm. and for the first shot, undoubtedly you bled like crazy. For the first shot, actually, I mean, I've been on it for over a year, and the first shot, um, you know, the, what you expect to happen happened, which was that it tapered off. Hold and on. So within you're... within the last two shots, the last two cycles, I started to get some abnormally Susan, abnormal bleeding. Susan, just answer my questions, okay? For the first shot, you bled heavily, like like everyone does, right? No. Did you bleed throughout the month? No. You didn't didn't bleed at all. No, I mean I think I think I bled a little. It was a long time ago, so I'm trying to remember exactly. Okay, the first shot usually you bleed throughout that entire three month period. I don't. I don't believe so. I think it. I think there was a little bit, but not much. Okay. And then the second shot, usually there's no bleeding. Right? Correct. The period stops altogether. Mm -hmm. Third shot, no bleeding. Mm -hmm. And then fourth shot, all of a sudden, the bleeding returns, for you. Eventually, yeah. Fourth shot, the bleeding returns. Bleeding returned. Fourth shot. I I can't keep track of the exact number. I don't know if it was the fourth, but it was. I'd been on it for a while. Okay. Well, what shot are you on now? Do you know? Um, I've actually lost track of the number. Well, if, if it's four shots a year, mm -hmm. and you've been on it for a year. I've been on it over a year. A year and two months? Um, I'm, I'm going to guess about a year and a half, maybe, something okay, like that. Okay, so you probably had six shots. And so this last two, you, so you had some stability mm -hmm. for two or three cycles, two or three shots, and then all of a sudden, pow, it comes back in. Anything else going on? Did you have your thyroid checked? Yeah, I mean, they've, I've, I've come out with a clean bill. Are you on any, a lot of stuff. You're not on any new medication? No, no other kind. Okay, are they going to switch you to regular birth control pill? Well, here's the the reason I was asking is because I'm going in to see the doctor again tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I had heard you mentioning to somebody that they have a shot where they give you estrogen also, which should alleviate the problem. Yeah, but with this kind of bleeding, it, because it's so persistent through six months of of this of this um, three month shot, I I would think they'd want to put you on the oral pill for a while and try to stabilize things. All right. Just and try to find the right kind of. Do you have an opinion of... on this this new patch? Yeah, it's good if if you can tolerate it. But uh, I think until you're you're having complications right now in terms of this persistent bleeding, make yeah. sure you're taking iron supplements, right? Mm -hmm. I take calcium too. Okay, and then they'll put you on the pill for a while. They'll, they'll stabilize this, and then you can think about the patch after that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Good luck. Bye. What is this new patch, Drew? It's just another trans. It's another way to deliver the contraceptive instead of orally. It's transdermally. Yeah, it's, I think I I think I've is it is it new? Yeah. I forget I've seen it. I yeah. saw it. In a, there's an <laughs> there's an issue of uh, Essence magazine <laughs> that's sitting around there somewhere. Yeah, I just saw that. I walked out. I don't know it. why. I I think it struck me. You, you, I never. Uh, us white people, we don't take a look at those uh, black publications enough. <laughs> but they have stuff like why is Whitey holding you down <laughs> and stuff like articles on that. There's a good one in there. I'm telling you, go find that Essence magazine. There's a, it's like a why white women won't let black women work or something. Wow. There's something crazy in there. You got to read that. But the point is, is I was uh, thumbing through it and uh, I saw the patch. I mm -hmm. saw that patch. And the reason I noticed it is because uh, the model who was modeling the patch was uh, one of the juggies from the man show. Oh my God. Yeah. Good times. Nice. It's nice to see him working. Nice. Yeah, go find that magazine, Drew. All I'm right, telling during, you. during the break. Okay. All right. Well, we should take a break now. That's right. Are you ready to do that? I'm ready. Rachel? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm sorry you had to endure all that talk about oh, no, abuse I and just, bleeding no, and everything. I just didn't want to weigh in on something. No, weigh it's, in. No, but I mean, I, I'm clueless about this. I'm letting the experts. Hey, uh, like experts, you, Adam. You went, you do went, the to, job. You went yeah. to Dartmouth. Adam went to carpet cleaning school. <laughs> True. Well, How many times you know. I have to explain to you my qualifications for this show? <laughs> Life. Right. Yes. No, my qualifications for this show are this show. That's right. That's right. Do, do a thousand calls a year, and after five years, right. you start to figure right. out uh, what's going on okay. out there. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Rachel Dratch, dear, 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 dear friend. Dear friend. 
from Saturday Night Live is uh, in studio. I'm in Las Vegas. Drew's going to go get that Essence magazine. I know you subscribed, Drew, but uh, I don't believe that was your issue I saw floating I, around uh, Westwood uh, One. Uh, Ebony's mine. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm a jet man myself, but uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hello, this is your radio. radio. Love Line will be right back. Love Line is brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom, the most trusted for over 80 years. Line. I'm Adam. That is Dr. Drew. I'm in uh, Las Vegas tonight. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. I'll be back in uh, L.A. tomorrow night. And uh, Rachel Dratch from Saturday Night Live is joining us. Hey, uh, you college folks over there. I'm, I got the yellow pages here. I'm trying to look up the uh, cab. Yeah. Taxi. Yeah, what do I look under? Taxi? taxi? Yeah, look yeah. under T for taxi? I think so. I think so, yeah. Yeah. See, I went with the cab and yeah. uh, mm. ended up getting lost in uh, the cabinet. Mm. <laughs> Had a little flashback to when I used to make cabinets. I was just staring at these things. Nevada cabinet specializing in commercial and gaming tables. And I was like, oh. <sighs> While you were staring at cabinet makers, I was staring at Essence. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Essence magazine. Ortho yes. ever is the patch. It is a once a week transdermal, you know, across the skin contraceptive. So if people are yeah. having difficulty remembering to take the pill, there's a, a version you can take that's a patch where once a week. Did you see it in that magazine? Oh, yeah. You got the magazine yeah. right in front of me. Nice I also, looking I, model, right? Yeah. Oh, that's her? Yeah. Wait a minute. She looks like a mom. Well, now did you... Her. There's a different mm. picture. Hold on. Yeah. You look in there now. Yeah, Drew, yeah. did you look at the front about uh, white women holding down black women? Do you mean white women at work, their privilege, our pain? <laughs> that one. <laughs> that, that one. <laughs> I love that title. It's very Their creative. Privilege, our pain. Please, uh, would you read that article and tell me what it's about? <laughs> no, I refuse. I want to know what Whitey's up to. <laughs> oh. I never did trust them white bitches. I got to be honest with you. Oh, my God. You know, in uh, every third article is about uh, how uh, white women are stealing black men. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like something you'd like. To, uh, you should take up with the fellas more than the ladies, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know how women are—they blame each other for everything. Yeah, everything. God bless them. Yes. All right, All right uh, I'll read the article. Drew, there, Drew, you can look into that article and get back to us on. I'm very interested in what the uh, what their pleasure and pain is. <laughs> privilege? No, they're oh, privilege. Privilege. Are pain. privilege. Okay, now, right. remember we were talking about the... We you know, talk- it's funny, there's, no. there's a, a black woman who's staring at me through the window <laughs> right now who works at this uh, radio station. Well, ask her to get a, get some comment from her. Uh, I'm scared she's going to put a shift in me. Oh, please. All right, let's go, uh, we were talking let's to, go the girl, to the phones. Right, yes. We were talking to a girl a while ago who wondered if it was rape when a guy pulled a condom off midstream and ejaculated mm-hmm. around her, and when she would said clearly she didn't want that. And so here's Mike, who's 29, he's a law student, going to give us an answer on that one. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Mike. Good. Good. Just want to say uh, you guys do great work. Um, you should be very proud. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Especially when Adam talks about his napping and masturbating. I'm very, <laughs> very proud. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's a god's all, man. Mm. Um, yeah. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, I was just actually happened to be studying this today. It's in a torts law. Mm-hmm. And this is based on a, on a Michigan ruling. So... You know, if she wants to consult a lawyer, she'd have to, you know, make sure there's that precedent in her state. Mm -hmm. But what this says is, one who knows he has a venereal disease and knows that his sexual partner does not know of his infection commits a battery by having sexual intercourse. Okay, well, that that wasn't the question. The question was, he didn't know he had an STD, presumably. She may not even have gotten it from him. The question was, the fact that he took his condom off when she had said leave it on midstream and maybe even ejaculated or sort of around her or in her, is that some sort of battery? Well, not if, if, if he she, didn't know. He, she said, clearly, don't do this. I will not have sex with you if you take that condom off. And she went to the bathroom. She, he took it off. She didn't right. notice. And pow. Forget yeah. the STD piece. Well, you know, the thing that's interesting is the interruption part. I mean, the fact that she... 
the thing where you could make an interesting case for rape, I guess, is that she said, eh, maybe not rape, but she said, I will have sex with you under this condition. Yeah. And that condition is that you wear a condom. Then he removes the condom, and when he removed the condom, he removed the condition under which she would have sex with him. Yeah. So now he's having sex with her with no conditions, which is, which is no. a slight bit of rape. Yeah. Yeah, it's negligence. I mean, she he might she might be able to you know the burden of proof would be on her, but there there might be documentation there that he knew he had the venereal venereal disease beforehand. You know, right? So if you if if you could prove that, then you'd have a case. And yeah. it all happened five months ago, and it's very unusual to have mail ward uh, documented. Very okay. unusual. So that is all right. yeah, not unless they come up and burned times. off or something. All right, Mike. Thanks. Yeah, you bet. Bye bye. Bye. That's a tough one. Uh, here's a Rachel question. Ryan, 26. Yes. Hi. Hey, hey Ryan. Hi. Hey. Is Rachel Draft there? Yes, she is. Wow, I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. Oh, my God. I can't I, believe it. I'm not worthy. Oh. No, joke. Um, okay. <laughs> basically, you guys were talking earlier about World Series, how being on SNL is like a World Series kind of, and I, um, I'm kind of an aspiring comic myself. Uh-huh. I've been watching the show since I was 10, and so it is kind of like a dream for me. But anyway, I've never done stand-up, and I'm thinking about going into stand-up. But I'm kind of um, nervous in front of people. Right. Like I did a presentation in one of my classes, and I was like, when I was doing it at home, obviously I was a, I was pretty damn funny. But then when I got right. to class, I was like, bruh, bruh, bruh. right. So, well, I think I think like um, part of either improv comedy. I've never really done stand up, but I did improv comedy, which is like the group thing where you get suggestions from the audience. But it, but part of it is like everyone that starts out is nervous. Like it's not just like because you're nervous that means you wouldn't be good at it because part of getting used to doing stand-up or improv or just performing is facing that fear of being in front of people so I think that's pretty normal and all you need is the practice of being in front of an audience or maybe taking a class or something that can that's a good sort of safe way of performing in front of others without you know just being completely on your own because you're with other people in your same situation so I don't know if in Phoenix there's like um, improv classes or or stand up something. I heard they outlawed comedy in Phoenix, <laughs> and actually all of Arizona. That was well, my understanding. Well, I don't know like how serious you are about it, but like if you really wanted to get into comedy, I mean, I would suggest moving to Chicago. But I don't know how practical that is. But there's out there there's Improv Olympic and Second City. You can take class and you know really throw yourself in. Or L.A. of course is probably closer. But um, I don't know what your current situation is. So you about. Called- you worked at Second City or performed at Second City? Yeah, yeah, and they have classes there, too. And uh, Chicago has also Improv Olympic, which is another great place to take class as well. Um, and then L.A. has Groundlings and Improv Olympic and a bunch of other things. They have too. Acme. The, I was at Acme There's a ton for a of stuff. But like basically, like, getting in front of the audience is, is the first step. So um, I don't know if there's somewhere you could do that, like an open mic thing. or, But just know that the, the fear is a definite, you know, it's a definite part of it for everybody. Even me, Ryan. Wow, even Rachel Trash. <laughs> Just um, let a dear, dear friend. I, I knew well, I, I, Adam, I knew I loved this Essence magazine. Pushing for emergency <laughs> contraception. See? Oh, they're pushing for emergency yes. contraception. God oh, that's bless good. them. Yes. Right. But r- read, read, find the article I found about it. I'll the, read it during uh, the, the pain. I'll read it during okay, the but now here's, uh, I think, what Rachel is saying, which is, all the people that aren't nervous that you see on TV were nervous yeah. at some point. The reason they're not nervous now is because they've been through so much crap that right. they're skilled now. It's the same way a baseball player, to uh, harken back to the sports analogy, isn't nervous when he's at the plate. Oh, I just got hit with another one oh, of those no. huge static shots. But the point is, is he's not nervous at the plate because he played in high right. school, he played in college, he played in AAA, and by the time he got to the pros, he wasn't nervous. Right. So you have to do and that maybe, yeah, go comedically. Ahead, and may, yeah. maybe in Phoenix, there's like the the giggles shack where the, where the you know, like if there's like the stand-up club there, maybe they have classes or something. And then you can practice in a safe environment. You know, in right. front, of, you'll be in a group of other wannabe stand-ups, and then you'll sort of get started that way. Okay, let me ask you guys a more pressing question. Sorry. I can't find anything under taxi. I can't find anything under cab. Hmm. Well, there you go again. Check, there you go. Checker cab. 
Taxi. Well, yeah, look on, well, for know. yellow cab. We're looking at yeah, the white I'm pages. opening the yellow pages. Shouldn't there be something under cab no, or taxi? taxi? And I tried looking I, under. Adam? Yes, I tried. I'm got, I got taxidermy here. Uh, I, I tried looking cab? under under transportation, too, and couldn't find anything. How can that be not under taxi? I don't know where the goddamn cabs are in a phone book. See, this see, this is what prevents me from being a human being. Because once in my entire life I decide to act like a human being, which is, I need a cab, I'll just pick up the yellow pages and call the cab like a human being and go out and meet it. And I, I look at the yellow pages for 25 minutes, I find nothing, and then I just want to go back to car. What clean. comes before taxidermy on, on the yellow pages there? Okay, I'm, I'm now flipping around, but well, what you take another taxidermy? call and I'll tell you. Well, I'm reading Essence magazine right now, so I want you to tell me what comes before taxi. <laughs> this is a great magazine. It beats the crap out of Cosmo. Oh, really? really? Oh, my God. It really is good. Right. Well, let's see. Let's see. I got tax, like tax services. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Here it is. Thank you. Here it is. Thank yes, you. very good. Yeah. But let me tell you something. I'm in Nevada. I got the yellow pages. and There's three tax taxi cabs. Taxes on one page, taxidermy's on the next, and taxi cabs takes up uh, one quarter of the bottom of one page. And so, what does that tell you about that business? What if you end know. up in, in the Oregon, taxi or, cab confessions cab ooh, in ooh, Vegas? It shoots in Vegas. To me, it means organized crime still oh, plays sorry. a hand in, in Las Vegas. Oh. Is that what it means? Why? There's the monop somebody monopolizes. There's no no free enterprise. Well, why would, oh, I see. I see. There's just not that many of them. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to call these people. All right. Here's uh, Jesse. Oh, hello. Hi, Jesse. What's up? Jesse? Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I have a question. Okay. Um, I missed my pill today. Yeah. Uh, actually, last night. And I remembered to take it, but I didn't take it. I wasn't, I wasn't able to take it till. Tonight, after I had sex, so I doubled up. Okay. Just right now. Um, where Where in the packet are you? Where are you? I'm um, in the sixth day. Do that so again. You're where? Six days. Was it six day? Oh, Look at the first week. Actually, the 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 worst times to miss it are the earlier in the packet. Oh, that's yeah. The ones that make that prolong the sort of pill-free interval. Yeah. You're getting towards the middle here, which is not the greatest time. Uh, you're it's, probably okay. There's uh -huh. some evidence that it can take up to a week for ovulation to reinstate itself. So in general, it's thought that it's you're okay. However, it's advisable to use a second means of contraception for the rest of this packet. Yeah. Some people uh, say just for seven days. I say for the rest of the packet. Yeah. Um, so just sit back and wait, I guess, or should I? Uh, you should be okay. Be if okay. you if you you should go ahead and take a pregnancy test in two weeks just to be completely sure, and you should use a condom for the rest of this packet. All right. Um, okay. just one more question, yeah. really quick. Uh, this yeah. is um, uh, well, I've been engaged for uh, two years now, and uh, my my fiance totally knows how I'm against him watching pornographic videos, and um, the thing is that once I I found one in his underwear drawer, and I I you know I confronted him with it and. Um, he's all, well, it's mine, you know, he confessed that it was his, and it was cool, you know, he let me have the video, and I trashed it. And by the way, Jesse, who, whose else was it supposed to be? Yeah. Well, his, well, I don't know if it was his friends or his, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. listen, it, it's worse if it's his friends and it's in his <laughs> underwear drawer, right, isn't right, it? Right, right. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like him finding a dildo and you saying it's not mine, I'll just keep it between the box spring and the mattress. Well, anyways, All right, so, so you, you destroyed it. Yeah, I destroyed it. Um, we went to the. To me, that's like that's like burning books. That's uh, like when I hear about the Nazis burning books. That's what I think of when I think of destroying pornography. It's <laughs> one one step away from Nazi Germany. <laughs> yeah, and and, also, and well, that was a while ago. And uh, how did you destroy it? I smashed it. <laughs> you um, took a hammer to it. Yeah, I got rid of it. You know, I didn't want my little brothers finding it in my underwear drawer, so, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. so um, he knows how I feel about yeah. that. <laughs> and also, um, I left my, my, my bag in his truck one day, and um, I found that his truck was um, unlocked, so I went in it, and I dropped my bag on the floor, and I was, as I was reaching towards it, 
I find behind his car seat. Uh, Hooker's like body. Three hmm. pornographic videos. You know, I, I, I'm like, what the heck is this? So I. All right, all right. Would you put this loud mouth on hold for a second? Okay. Look, I. I I don't want to get into my usual line of questioning with her about what the hell happened and what did your dad do to your mom. But we all know something's up with the chicks who get a little spazzy with the porn. Well, no, little spazzy. Little spazzy is probably healthy, but crazy spazzy. Taking a sledgehammer and, uh, you know. Yeah. We don't know if it was a sledge. It could have been a mini sledge or a single jerk or a ball peen hammer or a waffle ended framing hammer or smooth edge finish hammer perhaps a hatchet handle hammer which is uh, something that i enjoy using but she probably took a hammer of some form to it i agree with you drew mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we know something's wrong with her mm-hmm. and i would not marry her <laughs> this is a woman that has energy and there's something up and it has nothing to do with the pornography that's right and i don't i don't know what the answer is and i don't feel like talking to her about the answer but well, that's don't blame this guy because we need to take a break yeah, and don't pull this S either, which is what all you broads pull, which is, oh, it's not the fact that you had the porn. It's that you lied about it. Of course he lies about it. He has to lie around. He has to lie about everything in front of you because it's like living with a with an adolescent. You're going to spin off into space if you ever find out the truth about anything. If you let the guy go and beat off once in a while with his porn, he wouldn't have to lie to you. But you create an environment where he needs to lie, and therefore he lies. So please don't act like that's the part you're pissed about. Should we take a break? Yep. All right. We'll be right back after this. Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Rachel Dratch is uh, with Dr. Drew in Los Angeles. I'm out here in Vegas, and uh, Rachel, of course, from Saturday Night Live. Well, I called the cab company. Yeah. Okay. And they said uh, they took about uh, ten minutes worth of information for me about uh, what suite I'm in and what my cross streets are, and then they said, "Well, if the cab doesn't show up in twenty minutes, call us back." That sounds about mm. right. Yeah, and I said, yeah, but what are we going to talk about when I call you back? Well, call us back. (laughs) That doesn't sound that promising, does it? I wait outside for 10 minutes, and then after 20 minutes, when I realize it hasn't come, I go back inside and call them? Perhaps, though, they were listening to you on the radio Mm. and noted that the cab may have come and gone by the time you actually arrive at the corner, at the curb. Mm. Drew, you know, last time we tried this, I ended up just walking down the street. Yes, until I uh, finally had a cab pass me in the mm-hmm. middle of the desert. Yes, yes. It wasn't bad. It made me feel like I was doing something. <laughs> okay, I may do that this time. All right. Drew, All right. did you read Essence magazine and I find did. out? I did. Yeah, it's good. It's a good article. Well, That's, this is a great magazine. It well, really what's is. What's going on? What's going? What's What's hey, the title of it again? It, it was, uh, well, White Women at Work. But the, the headline on the front of the, the magazine was, White Women at Work, Their Privilege, Our Pain. All right. And actually, what happened? They actually, there's a good article about how to navigate sexism and racism in the workplace, not just for black women, but for anybody. But what about the white women? I mean, it just talks about how you know that you need to you need to sort of play the game of the workplace, and that white women seem to be more attuned to that, and black women need to learn from that and follow suit. That's all. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's it's good advice. Well, I think they got management. it in for our white women. That's no, all I'm no, saying. No, it's not one of those articles. That's a good article. All right. And by the way, well, but here's the point: it sells magazines to have it seem like it is. Because you know the what? front of it would suggest I, that. God bless them. Maybe that's a, a Cosmo to take a page from that and go ahead and sell their magazines and then put some substance inside. All right. True. Big Essence fan. Yeah, I am. And by that. the way, as I was driving in, uh, <laughs> I pulled a real power move driving in here. I had the cab drive through a Taco Bell, <laughs> which uh, I just thought to myself, you know you've arrived when you're telling the cab <laughs> to go through places, oh, even if no. it's a Taco Bell. The idea that I had the cab pull through the Taco Bell was a real power move on my 
My, that was a class move, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I passed a, a big fitness club. It was like Nevada Fitness. And it said, women free. <laughs> women enroll free. No, mm. n- no payment for the ladies. And I thought, you know, people sort of gloss over this part of society, but... There's a lot of like women free nights at clubs and there's a lot of uh, health clubs that let women in for free and stuff. I'm not a, I, I don't go for that. But women what pay is more, that? women pay more for haircuts and dry cleaning. Now, what what about insurance? What about uh, car insurance? We pay twice as much for that car insurance. How dare you? Well, dry cleaning. That's just cuz you just guys have listing little factors. Yeah, well you the reason the reason you pay so much for that uh, dry <laughs> clean is cuz you wear all that frilly taffeta everywhere. <laughs> all, right, all right, we got about 1 minute before we have to go oh, back no. to break. Here's Kelly. You go to those Jeez. those dead balls <laughs> and your <I> taffeta. <laughs> Kelly's 18. Kelly, what's going on? Hey, I was wondering if I were to get my nipples pierced, would I still be able to breastfeed in the future? Would God let you? No, would I be able to? Uh, yes, apparently you can. Uh, though yeah. the breastfeeding already is a difficult maneuver. It, women somehow think that it's something that happens automatically and naturally. It doesn't. You have to be trained in it. And having had the piercings apparently makes that a little more difficult, but not okay. impo- so not not impossible. Not okay. Impossible. The piercings yeah. then come. But up. just keep in mind, no guy likes it, and if he does like it, you shouldn't like the guy. <laughs> Why is that? She said, why, why do no guys like it, no. or why shouldn't you trust a guy who likes it? Both. Both. Well, the reason no guys like it is because it's unattractive. Okay. It's weird looking. And the reason you shouldn't trust the guy who does like it is because he's into an unattractive and bizarre look and should not be trusted. It speaks volumes about him. Okay. Thanks. All right, baby. Not All being right. funny, Kelly. Right. Being good, serious. Good times. I'm just saying, why bother? Listen, you crazy broads with your crazy hair and your big unicorns painted on your nails. Guys don't want this. Why bother? Like, the, you guys, Rachel, please, go yeah. with me here for a well, second. Okay, what? You, you're going through the airport. You see some crazy broad with her hair five shades of orange, and it's standing up like she's Bride of yeah. Frankenstein. Well, and you think to yourself... Is there a celebrity? Yeah. Yeah. Well, where did you get the idea that this looked good? Like when you open the French fashion magazines, do you see the crazy orange hair? Is there any celebrity? When you turn on entertainment tonight, do you see any of your favorite celebrities? Do do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you seen this hair anywhere else? Why are you doing it if you've not seen it anywhere else? Because I think like they're in search of an identity. But if their identity is sort of like husky, crazy-haired right. chick no, in the I'm ski pants, then they've nailed it. <laughs> no, I'm but with you. You're with me, and you're with me on the tats and the piercings too, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh huh. And now we're going. I I know th- quiet down, Drew. Well, I know now a we got to go with guys. you on a commercial break. I know. I know a thousand guys. They go to a strip club. They see the the chick with the tats and the piercings, and it's like weird. They don't like it. Stop doing it, women. Please, you're strippers. It up. Please. All right, let's take a little uh, little break, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, here's the deal. You looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Call the Dateline. That's the show, everybody. I want to thank uh, Rachel Dratch for coming in tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> I'm sorry dear. I wasn't there in person to I see know. you. I know. I know, but I still I still feel like we're dear, dear friends. Okay, good. Well, now Rachel and I are dear, dear, yes. dear, 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 dear friends. Right, right. Well, R- Rachel, you're going to be in uh, Los Angeles for how long? Um, for the week. She's doing a set. She's I'm doing shooting uh, an episode of King of Queens. Ah, I see. Well, we shan't see each other then. I know. I thought you're. I thought you're going to be here for the whole summer or no. something. The whole summer, right. which ends in a week. I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. which is actually was over Tuesday. <laughs> That's right. But you know, uh, when I come to New York next, yeah. perhaps I could come see a taping of Saturday certainly, Night Live. Certainly. Oh, that yes. would be great. Well, I'll, I'll call your uh, no count brother Dan and okay. uh, see what I can arrange. All right, good. Per- perhaps I'll dangle some more Coldplay <laughs> tickets in front of him. Okay. 
All right, so, hey, Drew, call me on my cell phone. Will do. I got a lot of time to kill, buddy. <laughs> so, until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. You know, sex is not a recreational sport. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.